Welcome back into The Lawyer You Know, and today we're talking about Deshaun Watson again because it looks like this case is not going away, and we're doing one of my favorite things to do in one of the more popular videos on our page and reacting to a lawyer press conference. And today it's Tony Busby, who is a high publicity, high profile, self-proclaimed plaintiff's personal injury lawyer. Deshaun Watson called him sleazy. Deshaun Watson called him money hungry, publicity seeking type of lawyer. He's a plaintiff's personal injury lawyer. A lot of us get bad names. That's what I do. A lot of it's unfair. Some of it is warranted. We talked about some of the stuff I wouldn't do that Mr. Busby did on his Instagram page. But as we go through this press conference, there is a ton of nuggets that are very important to the case, very interesting, and may change your mind about how you feel about this Deshaun Watson case, whether it is just a quick publicity grab or money grab on their part. There may be some more legitimacy to it. And what's great about this press conference is it gives you an insight into what the closing arguments would be if this case were to go to trial. And Mr. Busby goes through a lot of examples and a lot of questions that will make you think. Is there more legitimacy to this than most of us thought? Now, if you like this sort of content and you like these videos, please like this one, subscribe to our page and comment and let me know that this is the type of content that you enjoy listening to. This is gonna be relaxed. We're gonna go through, we're gonna watch this entire video and we're gonna just talk about it as if we were sitting in the room together and breaking down what the legal aspects that are important that came out during this and why Mr. Busby is doing things the way that he is and to start, he introduces his colleagues, and there are three of four members of a, the team of what he calls on this Deshaun Watson case, of all these cases that he's filed against Deshaun Watson. What's very interesting, and keep your eye out, is they are all four female team members. Now, this is a case centered around sexual violence against females. This is a case about empowering females. This is a, a case about giving women voices when they feel like they're powerless and they feel like they can't stand up and say no or fight against their accusers who may be rich and powerful like Deshaun Watson. So it is no accident that all four of the members of this team are also female. They may be great lawyers. I'm not saying they're not good lawyers, but as far as optics go, when you have four females that are gonna destroy this rich and powerful guy in a sexual violence case, that can be very impactful on a jury that's listening to these women. And you'll see later in the video that one of his female colleagues is reading some of the pleadings and she almost gets choked up in the middle of it. That is going to have a profound effect on the jury. So let's get into it. All right. All right, are we ready to start? Uh, my name is Tony Busby with the Busby Law Firm. Uh, I'm going to let uh, the other members of my team introduce themselves. The introductions of Mr. Busby and his colleagues aren't that important, so I'll take a second to say a lot of these press conferences happen with the lawyer calling it. So this is what looks like something that's set up by Mr. Busby so he could explain their side of the case. I paused it there. So he could explain their side of the case and what's going on and put all this out in the media and explain how strong their case is and why people should believe what these victims are saying. So uh, he'll mention later that Texas has an open court, public, all, all uh, court documents, all pleadings, all complaints are public record. Same thing in Florida. You can talk about this. Um, but what that also does is make people that are uh, media members look up for the recently filed cases and they'll see if anything's juicy that they can write a story on and they'll reach out to us. And they'll want to talk to us about these cases. We've had a lot of cases, some really juicy, some I didn't find that juicy that media members did and we've done interviews on them, but we'll talk about some of these cases if the news is interested in them and we can raise awareness, whether it's a nursing home abuse case or whether it's a high profile case against a celebrity that I'll talk about later in this video to compare to this case. But I mean, a lot of times the, the media members in the local news will pick up these complaints because they are public record. They will search the recently filed complaints. And I think Mr. Busby is trying to intimate that's what happened here, but this looks like a press conference that may have been set up by his office. We'll see what you think. Leave it in the comments. Do you think Mr. Busby set this up or do you think the media members set this uh, news conference up? We have one more who's also on this file um, who had a death in the family and she cannot be here. Now, as has been widely reported, we have filed lawsuits on behalf of seven women against Deshaun Watson for civil assault. So by the time you listen to this, this video is already outdated. It says seven, I've heard up to 12, and he's got over 20 that he's considering. And you should all know that before we filed the first lawsuit, I personally visited with uh, the plaintiff multiple times. Uh, I understood that this case uh, would generate a lot of interest. Uh, I wanted to make damn sure uh, that what she was saying. So we call this bolstering in the legal field. He said, before he took this case, he met with the first plaintiff multiple times because he wanted to make absolutely sure everything she was saying was true. 
And then also, obviously that intimates that he confirmed it was true and therefore he filed the lawsuits and everything all these women are saying is true, according to him. But he's just bolstering his client's testimony saying, I met with her so many times. I didn't just take this on a whim and run after Deshaun Watson because I didn't like him or because I'm friends with Cal McNair or because I'm a Texans fan and I want to get back at Deshaun Watson. A lot of the things I mentioned in my first video, he is dispelling all of those right at the outset of this news conference. He is dispelling the chance that Deshaun Watson will ever be able to come back after him for saying he didn't do his due diligence as a lawyer to find out if what his client was saying was reasonable. He's saying I met with her tons of times. What she said was absolutely true and she proved it to me. It's plausible. I believe her with everything I, ha with everything I have. So that will throw out anything for him concocting this fraudulent scheme to get all these women to make up lies against Deshaun Watson. He comes out straight out of the gates and dispels that. Uh, after visiting with her that she was telling the absolute truth. And, and to be quite honest, uh, she's a very brave person. She's a very brave person very and brave she was person. telling the absolute truth. Uh, her story certainly passes the smell test. Her story uh, passes the smell brave. test and truthful. And of course, when she told me the story about what had happened to her, I, I, like many of you, I wondered, why would someone like Deshaun Watson, who probably has access to 40 or 50 trainers, masseuses and the like, why would he reach out to individuals on Instagram? Uh, and that's a question that maybe you should ask him or his lawyer. See, this is, this is where we get to the closing argument type things that he's throwing in there as little nuggets. So he says, let's just start off for all you people sitting out there that don't believe these women that are all over Deshaun Watson and love Deshaun Watson and think he's an awesome guy. For all you people that want to just poo poo away all of these claims, ask yourself this question. Deshaun Watson has access to 40 or 50 trainers, masseuses, chiropractors, team doctors, whoever he could possibly want through the multi-billion dollar industry. That is the NFL. Ask yourself why he's going on Instagram and messaging these random masseuses and chiropractors to come and give him a private massage during the pandemic. Explain that. Why is that happening? Now, Deshaun Watson's going to blame it on the pandemic and say, oh, I couldn't do that. But he absolutely could have had some of the Texans employees come out and give him a massage, right? Ask yourself that question and ask Deshaun Watson's lawyers that question. He's trying to feed stuff to the media that plays into his narrative. Not saying it's not true. I'm just saying it plays perfectly into his narrative. And again, this is the type of thing you argue in a closing argument. We are now representing 12 women, uh, and we will file the remaining cases, uh, the additional five cases in due course as we do our due diligence. You should also know that we've also spoken to more than 10 additional women. So they filed seven lawsuits, but they're representing 12 women, and there are 10 more at least. So we're talking about over 20 women complaining about sexual misconduct from Deshaun Watson in the massage arena. So more than, more than 22 women that we've spoken to uh, who have reported conduct similar to that laid out in our- And they're all saying filing. similar conduct that they filed in their complaint. I say this to any woman out there that's had an experience like this, and I wanna be very clear about this. If you are a victim of sexual assault, hear me, contact our office. You can remain anonymous. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your story, and we want your voice to be heard. I want to tell you a little bit about the 12 clients. Before they get to the 12 clients they currently represent, he just makes a ploy to all sexual violence victims across the country, across the world, listening to this. If you have this issue, contact his office. He wants your voice to be heard. While I agree with that, we would say the same thing, absolutely. As a personal injury lawyer, we would say the same thing. But he's doing it in a press conference that he's using against a high-profile celebrity defendant. And this is why some people say he's slimy or publicity-seeking, is he's using every chance he can to get the camera on him, to get the microphones, the blurbs, the social media posts, YouTube videos like this on him, so we may be feeding into that. But I just find this so interesting, and this is what we do, so it's so interesting how other people handle situations like this and he just makes a ploy for more cases in the middle of this. And you know, I wanna believe it's genuine. I wanna believe he does wanna empower these women and these victims, but it just, it's, it's hard to take it seriously. But I, I will say, as we've already started, this guy is a billion times better than Adam Johnson's lawyer at handling press conferences because this is a very well put together, well researched and planned press conference. And Adam Johnson's lawyer seemed like he was taken a little off guard with some of his answers. We'll link that video because it really is, 
It's a tough look for that lawyer, but Mr. Busby knew exactly what he was doing with this press conference, and he handled it pretty well, in my opinion. Let's keep listening. 12 clients we currently represent. Most of these women work in the massage so. industry. Some work at spas. Uh, some work from their homes. Some uh, will go to the Houstonian or the like uh, for a massage session. These are, for the most part, uh, licensed professionals. Uh, these are people that uh, many of them uh, are single mothers. Which is important because, you know, they're working for their family and also a lot of jury appeal. Single mothers out there putting it together, fighting hard for their kids, working Seven two jobs. Seven of these women that we filed things that you say in closing on arguments. Behalf, lawsuits on behalf are African American. So I don't know if you missed that part, but basically said of the 12 women, we have African American, Hispanics, Caucasian. All the mix, all different clients, all people that are going to be able to relate to their juries, all different races, probably all different looks, shapes, sizes, everything, but all licensed uh, massage therapists and all one thing in common, abused by Deshaun Watson. And three are Caucasian. Three of them are married. One is engaged. And like I say, many are single mothers. And again, many are single All of the cases that we have filed and we have vetted each one very carefully, uh, allege the same or similar conduct. Three of the women that we represent are undergoing intensive therapy as a result uh, of... Okay, so let's pause there for a second. Three of the women are undergoing intensive physical, I'm sorry, intensive mental health therapy as a result of Deshaun Watson's conduct. Now, this is important because one of the elements in these claims is damages and you have to prove damages, that he did this and that it caused some kind of damage to the plaintiff. And some of those damages are mental anguish, stress, anxiety, depression. And what do you do for those? You treat with a mental health counselor. So he's telling all of us, he's telling the jury that they have had to undergo intensive therapy because of the actions of Deshaun Watson. It can't be something they've done their whole life. They've always been depressed. They've always been on anti-anxiety medication and they're still doing that, no. This is something new that they've had to do because of Deshaun Watson. We can connect these damages to this case. That's what he's doing by telling us all of them are undergoing intensive therapy. That's the reason for that. Everything he says, there's a reason behind it. And I think that's very smart on his part to put this in front of the media, to let this out into the world, to potential jurors, to other people that may be thinking about hiring him for sexual abuse. He's putting out there. This is the type of stuff we're going to be able to prove in this case, and it's kind of a, a warning shot across the bow to Deshaun Watson and his lawyers. The defendant's conduct. You should know that at least one of uh, these women was referred to Deshaun Watson by the Texans organization. Uh, as late or as recent as last week, uh, the quarterback coach, Quincy Avery, referred uh, Deshaun Watson. So I don't know why he mentions this. I don't know if he's trying to implicate Quincy Avery, who I don't think works for the Texans, or if he's trying to implicate the Texans um, in some of this liability because big pockets, as if Deshaun Watson's aren't big enough. I'm not sure, but he's kind of keeping the door open that there may be other people involved and that it's still happening, which shows no remorse. Deshaun Watson keeps doing this. He's a predator. That's the type of stuff that this is telling us as we're listening, saying, listen, we have 12 women and there are more coming because he's still doing it right now as recent as last week. Ooh one of my clients in fact you should know that even even you've heard uh mr watson's you know his tweet where he said you know he was you know uh, we were seeking uh deshaun watson we were seeking publicity which is silly on his face I, I don't get that why is it silly on his face you can say okay every defendant says that about a personal injury lawyer but it's not silly on its face. You did an Instagram post, you're doing a press conference, you're all over the media because of this case. So I don't think it was silly on his face for Deshaun Watson to say a publicity seeking personal injury lawyer. The personal injury lawyers that take offense to that to me are just, they're, they're just, they think too much of themselves. It's like people are gonna hate on you for your job. People are gonna hate on us for what we do. They're gonna call us money hungry, publicity seeking type lawyers. And it's just not true. We do fight for victims, but some of us, I'm not gonna say this guy is, but there are personal injury lawyers that are slimy, scumbag, snake oil salesmen. So who cares? Let, let people say that. Deshaun Watson's getting sued by 20 different women. I think that speaks for itself. You don't have to comment on the fact that he called you publicity seeking in a case where you're getting a ton of publicity and doing news conferences and making social media posts about it. To me, it's silly for you to say it's silly. Or that uh, you know this was all about money. Uh, we actually had contact with Deshaun's, uh, Deshaun Watson's agent slash lawyer from Los Angeles who minimized these 
allegations, who did not take them seriously. We wanted to resolve this matter without a lawsuit, without any publicity. We knew that once we filed a lawsuit, Texas, of course, has an open courts provision in the Constitution, so all lawsuits are public, and we wanted to avoid that. What we received instead of cooperation with Mr. Watson's agent was dismissive behavior and, frankly, incredible arrogance. Even after we had... He takes some shots. He was arrogant. He was dismissive. Again, these people in power are just trying to take power from the little guy, take power from the victims. They're dismissive. They're arrogant. You know, he's just taking some shots at Deshaun Watson and his team. I had discussions with Mr. Watson's lawyer at the time, before he hired Rusty Harden. One of the clients... He name drops a ton throughout this as well, so just keep an ear out for that, including Rusty Harden. He name drops. He's some celebrity defense attorney that represents celebrities all the time. Even after we had had correspondence and after we had talked to Mr. Watson's lawyer, he did it again. He's a predator. That's what he's saying. He's going to continue this behavior. This conduct happened as recently as this month. The cases we have filed, these public cases, which are on file, and everybody can see them. We even have copies. Public cases on file. We have copies for you here. Now, we're going to pause here for a second because it's really important. Like I said, and he's going to mention here, in Texas, all these complaints, just like Florida, are public record. You can get them whenever you want to log on and try to print a copy. The media has access to all of them. So everything he's saying here is not going to violate attorney-client privilege, and that's very important because we can't do that. The bar doesn't only frown on that. They will suspend you or even take your license away if you violate attorney-client privilege in the media to get publicity. But what you can do is read public record documents, like a complaint, like the pleadings, which are other things filed in the case. And he even provides copies to all the media members there. I mean, he is just set up perfectly for this. It's, it's very interesting. And he keeps mentioning that, that all this is public, all this is public, all this is public. You hear alleged civil assault. Civil assault under Texas law is intentionally or knowingly causing physical contact with a plaintiff when the defendant knows or should know that the plaintiff would regard such contact as offensive. Civil assault, not criminal assault. We'll talk about criminal charges and maybe that's coming down the pipe later, but civil assault, which is, I mean, sounds very bad and it is bad in this case, but it is about as minimized of a charge as you can have. It's about as light of a charge as you can have. It's not sexual assault. It's not sexual battery. It's not even battery, which is offensive touching. Um, it's not aggravated assault or aggravated battery or anything like that. It's Simple civil assault, which is just the unwanted touching that you as the defendant knew or should have known, which is a common phrase in the legal sphere. It's a common legally that we lawyers talk about all the time. And it's very difficult sometimes for lay people to understand what knew or should have known means. That's if any reasonable person would have thought, I shouldn't do this, then that is impugned on you, which means you should know that. You should know not to do this. Even if you say, I thought she wanted to do this. I thought she was into it too. But everybody else looking like a jury says, it was obvious she didn't, dude. How did you not notice that? Well, now that's impugned on you and you should have known. Therefore, you are guilty of this. So that's what the new or should have known standard is. Same thing in slip and fall cases. If you knew or should have known about a defect, then you should have fixed it. Now, how can you prove someone should have known something? That's up to the lawyers. That's up to the evidence. Act as offensive. Now we know that in this case, there's a major power differential. You have a star quarterback who is physically and financially powerful. This is important. Versus single moms who work for themselves, mostly from See home. how he, he, so before he mentioned some of them were single moms, some of them married, some of them engaged. But now when he talks about the power disparity between the defendant and the plaintiff, which is a big ploy for him in this case, shouldn't call it a ploy, it's a big angle for him in this case to understand how we get in these situations and how these women are put in these positions. It's because we have rich and powerful defendants who are famous and celebrities known worldwide versus single moms who work from their home trying to provide from their family. So he's creating this power divide again, closing argument type stuff where you have this big, arrogant, nasty celebrity defendant client, and you have these poor single moms here that he's taking advantage of. That's the power struggle he's creating here in this press conference and what he will do likely throughout the trial if we were to see one, I doubt we will. One of the parties is famous, known internationally. The other is unknown, marginalized, and easy to criticize and minimize. 
And here's what you should know. This case isn't about money. Uh, if you look at the pleadings that we filed carefully, we have pled the jurisdictional minimums uh, in the state of Texas. Uh, the jurisdictional minimum uh, in state district court is $500. Uh, the case ain't about money. Okay, so we talked in the first video about case being about money, not being about money, when in fact the only thing you can really get out of the civil court system is money. He sent a demand letter asking for six figures. Deshaun Watson confirmed that. He doesn't deny it. But he does say this case is not about money. All we pled in the complaint was the jurisdictional minimum of $500. Let me explain to you what that actually means. In order to plead an amount in the complaint, it's something you have to prove. And 99.9% .9 of the time, you just plead the jurisdictional minimum, say at least $500 in this case. That's all you have to plead. Then you can go prove $5 million if you want. You get to get whatever a jury tells you you can get. I, I don't guarantee much. As a lawyer, we're not allowed to make guarantees but I come close to guaranteeing that he would not take $500 for all 22 of these women to dismiss all these lawsuits and go away right now. I'd be willing to bet he would not take $500 per case, even though he's gonna sit up there and say it's not about the money. This is an easy answer as a personal injury attorney in my opinion. It's not about the money, it's not just about the money, but these women can never go back in the place they were before they were abused. And that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to do. We're here to tell their story. We're here to get them the compensation they deserve because of what, because of what this nasty, arrogant, mean celebrity defendant did to these poor working moms. I'm not saying that happened. I'm just saying that's the argument you make. When people say it's about money, you say, what else? Okay, tell me, tell me, Mr. Media member, how do we take away the sexual abuse that this victim um, had done to her? How do we take that away? How do we take away that experience that's gonna change the rest of her life? Can you go and take it back? No. So money damages, that's what we have. That's what we as a country has found is the best remedy for these types of situations. So you can say it's not about the money all you want. And you can say you pled jurisdictional minimums. That means nothing. That doesn't mean all they're looking for is $500. That doesn't mean they really just want to tell this story. That's not what it means. He's trying to use it to say that's what it means. But in reality, when you litigate these personal injury cases, you always plead the minimum because the jurisdictional amount that he's talking about, that jurisdictional amount is just how you get into that court. If some places it's, if it's less than $5,000, it's gonna be small claims court. If it's between $5,000 and $15,000, it's gonna be county court. If it's above $15,000, it's going to be circuit court. That's different in every state and every area. But those minimums are just to figure out which court you should be in. So that $500 tells them it should be in whatever division that it should be in in Texas where they filed it. That's all that jurisdictional minimum means. Doesn't mean that's the value of the case, which is what he's trying to intimate to lay people like all of us listening and watching or all of you listening and watching with us. And that's not what it means. So he's trying to kind of use these legal terms to show they're not money hungry. They're not publicity seeking, which he'll talk about later. When in reality, it's about money. I mean, it's a civil case. There's no harm in saying it's about money. Now, it's not just about money, but money is the compensation for what Deshaun Watson did to these women, according to him and according to them. So I don't know why he has such a problem saying And it's certainly not, I'm not about seeking publicity or fame. I personally don't need it. <laughs> and these women don't want it. Oh, that one is just hard to listen to for me personally. I don't care how famous you are to say, and, and to say it's about publicity, I personally don't need it. <sighs> Dude, that is a bad look. I don't care if you're famous. I don't care if you have thousands of Instagram followers and worth millions of dollars. Just don't say stuff like that. That just sounds so bad and that's why people think these certain things about this guy and about us as a profession. It's because people like us, or I should say lawyers in this field say stuff like that and it's just unbecoming. There's no reason to say that. It's not about publicity. I don't need it. Gosh, I wish he just wouldn't have said that. This case is about female empowerment. Taking the power Now he's going to explain what the case is really about and his closing argument starts. These women who are stepping forward knew that they would face scorn and ridicule they all agreed to plead for the minimal jurisdictional limits of the court, and they bring these cases for one reason only, stopping further misconduct from this defendant. So they really wanna just stop further misconduct from this defendant, and that could be true as well. And it's fine to say that, and fine to say that's what it's really about. But again, he says they agreed to the minimum jurisdictional amount, which just, I wonder how this is gonna be used in the future because if I'm Deshaun Watson's lawyer, I know Deshaun Watson wants to clear his name, but I'll do proposals right now saying we'll settle for 500 bucks for every one of these uh, people. When they deny them, then use that against them and say, look, he said in a press conference, they only wanted the $500 jurisdictional lim or minimum and we gave it to him and they said no. So that's obviously a farce. That's what I would do if I was Deshaun Watson's lawyer, because this just isn't true in my opinion. They don't just want the jurisdictional minimum. And when he says they agreed to it, 
He could have had a conversation with them and said, do you want to just plead $500? Or what he could have said is, here's the complaint, sign off on the complaint. This is how we have to do it because it's jurisdictional limits and they signed off on it, therefore agreeing to the jurisdictional minimums. I don't know, but again, I just, this to me seems not genuine on his part that they're only looking for $500 and it's not about the money. And any others like him. And that's what the case has always been about, stopping this alleged behavior and preventing this alleged behavior from happening again. Now, let me talk to the armchair quarterbacks. Boy, this, this world, you know, it's, it's funny how people are so emboldened when they're, they're behind their keyboard on He's social right about media. This. The same people that won't, would never look you in the eye when you walk down the street, they'll, they'll call you every name in the book on social media. Uh, the know-it-alls, the people that think they know what I know and what, what my colleagues know, we won't be deterred. Your comments don't deter us. You know, I've been, I stopped counting at 10 days. So he's gonna talk a little bit about how he's such a high profile lawyer and how he's had these huge cases. And a lot of, I mean, the truth is, a lot of personal injury lawyers, a lot of lawyers in general, they're not gonna go away because people are being nasty or calling you names. Like I said earlier, this is nothing new for personal injury lawyers. That's why I don't know why he's pulling punches when it comes to money in the civil justice system, since that's in fact what it's about. Um, but he's going to go through about how they're not scared, but he's right. I mean, the people on social media, um, the people on these sports shows, the people that want to destroy the victims without knowing anything. And that's what we always say, unless you're the lawyer or a party to a case, you don't know anything. You only know what people want you to, to know. You only know what's public record. You don't know what's actually going on. You don't know all the evidence that may or may not come out at trial or come out during litigation. So we can't speak to, to, to guarantees. We can't know the ins and outs of a case like this. This is why I keep saying, you make these arguments, but who knows? I'm not saying any of this is true from either side because I know nothing. I've spoken to nobody involved in this case. So nobody can know what's going on. And the ones that come out so hard saying, all these victims are lying, all these victims are just after money, they're money seeking women, that this is this gives women a bad name. And then the other people that say, Deshaun Watson's a rapist, he rapes every woman that walks in his door. Just none of that's true. And we shouldn't say that as people that don't know what's going on in the case. He's absolutely right about that. So now let's hear about what a big shot he is and all the high profile you know, cases. I've been, I stopped counting at 10 death threats. And not only threats to me, but threats to my children, to my colleagues here at this it's table. It's just despicable, the stuff like that that happens these days is like the death threats online that are just disgusting. They do to lawyers. Like It's like this guy's job, no matter how much you don't like him, he's just doing his job and he's representing these victims who came to him and said, this happened to me. So what's he supposed to do? I don't believe you go away, let him keep doing it, or too bad, or be dismissive, or arrogant, like he said the other people were. What is he supposed to do? Is this his job? This is what we do. We fight for victims that have been injured or assaulted, just like this. So, I mean, you don't like personal injury lawyers at all, until you need one. Same thing with criminal defense lawyers. Everybody hates criminal defense lawyers until you need one. So death threats, it's just, it's terrible this day and age. To my colleagues here at this table, to even people that uh, were just commenters on my Facebook or social media there pages. There you go. He's a big shot. Let him tell you. I've that. handled some of the largest cases in this state. I represented Rick Perry when he was a sitting governor and was facing life in prison. I sued the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi. I sued Stanley Marsh. If you look right behind you and you see that picture there where you see Cadillac Ranch where it says is no longer owned by Stanley Marsh, the reason for that is sitting right here. I've handled cases like this before. We won't be deterred. We're prepared and we do our homework. We're prepared and we do our homework. I like that. I mean, that's a real At the end of the day, we're talking about football. Let's, let's not forget. We're talking about football. What we should be talking about is human dignity and the way women are treated. That's what we should be talking about. We are a society where we typically don't believe the accuser. We blame the victim and, if, and, and by proxy we blame, blame her lawyers. And I need to dispel some silly rumors. Yes, I live on River Oaks Boulevard and I live near the McNair family. I don't know the McNair family. I, I, I wouldn't recognize Cal or Hal, whatever his name is. So a lot of people were saying he was doing this because he's friends with the owner of the Texans. I mentioned that in my last video. He says, I do live on you know, that street with all the mansions, with all the rich people, but I don't know Cal or Hal or whatever his name is. You know, he tries to be like that. Who knows if he knows that guy and who cares? Just because he knows the owner of the Houston Texans doesn't make what all these 20 plus women are saying a lie. So this is another stuff that, that is silly and just dispel it and move it along, which he does a good job of that. If I saw him on the street, this case has nothing to do with the Texans. 
has nothing to do with free agency, the timing. I don't know anything about that silliness, and I don't, frankly don't care about it. Texans are not a team that I follow. Texans aren't a team that I follow. I don't care about free agency or anything like that. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know if I believe that. Deshaun Watson is as famous as ever, and now this all blows up. I don't know if I believe that, but again, whatever. It doesn't change the facts. It doesn't change what these women are saying Deshaun Watson did. That's the important thing, and that's what we go forward on. That's what we see what the evidence shows is based on that. The timing doesn't change the facts. Now, it may change the publicity seeking, may change some stuff like that, but it doesn't change the facts of what these women are saying. This case is instead about women, brave women, brave women who are willing to step forward knowing that they will be criticized and ostracized. And we should all get behind them, applaud them for their bravery, and support them. So here is what we know. If what they're saying is true, he's 100%. The civil cases will proceed. Ultimately, we will file 12 cases. Seven are now publicly filed. I've been in contact with attorney Rusty Harden, who I've known for many years, and he has agreed to accept civil... Pro- Real quick note, attorney Rusty Harden, who I've known for many years, again, just a name drop, guy that's a celebrity type attorney. Um, we, when we were suing Hulk Hogan in a car accident case, he represented Hulk Hogan. You know, everybody knows Rusty Harden. The celebrities always go and hire him. Doesn't always turn out well for them, but they always go and hire him. So he just name drops again. Civil process uh, for the cases that we continue to file. I've been formally been uh, contacted by the Houston Police Department. Uh, so he says that, right? And he'll say it a couple more times. He's informally been contacted by the Houston Police Department. Now, the issue with this is the Houston Police Department have come out and said, absolutely, we have not contacted you. And later in the video, he says, informally by a guy I know, I won't call him a friend. So that could just mean some guy, he knows that's a cop, texted him about it, and now they've reached out to him as the Houston Police Department again lawyerly type things using this stuff, maybe twisting it. I don't want to say twisting it, but I mean, he said he keeps saying informally. So I'll give him credit for that. He is saying he was informally contacted by the Houston Police Department, which could very well be true um, by some guy he knows that's not a friend. Uh, It is our intention for the clients that are willing to do so to put together a package and to submit it to the Houston Police Department of the information that we have. Not unusual. You think that a crime has been committed, you put together all the evidence you have in the civil case, give it to the police department, let them do their investigation, and they make criminal charges. There's different standards and scrutiny and rules for comparing criminal charges versus civil charges. So just because you have a successful civil case doesn't mean there will be a successful criminal case. You give them everything you have, and if they both work together, great, but sometimes it doesn't work out like that, and sometimes criminal charges don't go down. And I've seen a ton of comments about, oh, we'd believe it if the cops arrested him, which to me, is bad form because just because somebody gets arrested doesn't mean you should believe everything that's said about that person is true. But secondly, it also doesn't delegitimize or illegitimize the civil case just because there's not a criminal case. All he's saying is they're going to work with law enforcement if they want to investigate this. If not, they're going forward in civil court. No matter what law enforcement says, they're going forward. That's what he says here. It's not unusual at all in a case like this that has some quasi-criminal facts to it. It's been publicly reported that the NFL is investigating. We will, of course, participate and cooperate with that to the extent cooperate with an NFL investigation. Our civil court obligations. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn uh, the microphone over to Cornelia, who's worked very hard on this matter. So now he's going to turn it over to one of his uh, female colleagues to read some excerpts from the complaint, from two complaints, from two of the victims. This is where it get in- gets interesting because everything I heard was. Deshaun Watson went too far and made them uncomfortable and things like that, which is so vague that I'm not really sure how bad I feel about that. But let's listen to the facts she actually reads and that are in these public documents. That are already on file. Uh, The first one I'll be reading from are some excerpts from one that was filed March 18th. And these incidents happened September and October of 2020. We have an African-American woman who's a licensed esthetician. She's been in the business for about nine years. Um, Originally, Watson wanted to give her a massage. Always weird in these cases, again, I don't know what goes through anybody's head, but she heard that Deshaun Watson wanted to give her a massage, which she declined, but she gave him the benefit of the doubt and showed up anyways to give his massage. It's just weird stuff. I don't know what people are into. Um, but I mean, maybe just decline it. If this guy's asking to do something weird, who cares who he is? But she shows up anyways to give him a massage. She heard this from her boss. She obviously declined. That was odd, but she wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. So a session occurred starting in September. 
And during this session, Watson got completely naked. He got an erection. And he asked her what she was going to do about that erection. Weird and creepy. Again, I, I've never actually even had a massage done before, so I don't know, but I heard getting naked is normal. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Getting an erection, I heard, can be a, a side effect that is just natural that you can't control. Again, I have no idea. But then saying, what are you going to do about it? Very creepy. I guess that's the too far, you know, weird stuff that's going on. Let's keep listening. Plaintiff was scared and confused and didn't want to cause trouble. Didn't want to cause trouble. Kind of weird. Huh? She also feared what Watson would do to her career if she caused a scene. She felt powerless and ashamed. In one of the other sessions, Watson escalated his behavior. He tried to put his penis in plaintiff's hand and asked her if she would touch his penis. Plaintiff was in shock and was shaking. Watson also continuously moved his body in a way that caused his penis to touch plaintiff's hand. Okay, so it's interesting to listen to this type of stuff, and this has happened in some of our criminal defense cases too, um, and argumentation that we have made is if this was not consensual or something you didn't want to do, why continue to show up for more massages? Because they said at another session, and another session. So after he got an erection and, and asked her what she was going to do about it and was naked and doing all this weird stuff, she continues to set up sessions with him and continues to give him massages. I mean, I don't understand like the amount of power somebody has. This is just an Instagram relationship. You can just delete his account and he'll never know where you're at again and never bother you or have anything to do with you again. But then she keeps coming for more and more sessions and now he's trying to put his penis in her hand and now he's trying to get his penis to touch her hand and all this weird stuff, which I agree is totally creepy and weird. But why do you keep going and giving this guy a massage? That's a question that I would ask to, to this victim if I was a defense attorney. Why do you keep going back? Um, now, sometimes they just feel caught and trapped and they can't get out. And that could be her answer. I don't know. But that's something a lot of people are asking is, why does she keep going back to even massages if he is sexually assaulting her during these massages? He insisted that plaintiff keep focusing on his groin area. He was upset that plaintiff was fully clothed and told her she was wearing too many clothes. He also tried to kiss her on the mouth. Plaintiff cut the session short. She felt violated, terrified, and disgusted. So that's all for that one. Again, that Plaintiff one is one of the vague, gone handicap, too far. Depression, anxiety, she is in counseling. She has depression, anxiety, and she's in counseling. Again, those are the damages elements that are really important in these cases. But again, that stuff is he tried to kiss her, but it, when it didn't happen and she cut it off, she left. I mean, a lot of guys have probably been rejected. It's not sexual assault if you try to kiss somebody that you like. Again, I'm not saying that any of this is happening. I'm not saying that anything he did was okay. But that one just seemed kind of convoluted to me and a little bit vague if I'm going to read those um, allegations. But the next one, on the other hand, is taking it to the next level. And this is the one that's really damning for Deshaun Watson. And then coupled together, which is why when you have 22 different cases or 22 different allegations that are similar to this, it makes every other one look bad. If it was just that one on its own, maybe Deshaun Watson would have a good argument. But with 22 similar things where he's trying to get these women to touch him inappropriately, get them naked, kiss them, make them do other things like we're about to hear, that's when it's really damning when you have 22 of them. Because just one of them you may be able to explain away, but not all of them. This was filed March 17th. This incident happened December 2020. We have another African-American woman, a licensed massage therapist. She had been in business since 2018. She was newly engaged. She had graduated chiropractic school. She was really excited. Watson reached out to her on Instagram. Reach out to her on Instagram again. A session. All records, you can print all those messages. Plaintiff was Excited that someone like Deshaun would want to... Plaintiff was excited Deshaun Watson asked her to give him a massage, which is totally normal. He's a famous football player. It'd be really cool to do anything for him. It'd be really she's cool to give him a massage or cook him dinner or whatever it may be if you're a chef or whatever. It'd be cool. And that massage was ultimately scheduled December 28th in the morning in an office building. Her mom helped her get set up for the massage. Her mom helped her get... I don't her, understand. Her, her right. mother uh, eventually left. Watson arrived. Plaintiff left the room to let him get him dressed. And when she came back in, he was laying on the massage table 
completely naked with only a towel covering his buttocks. Okay, she left the room to let him get undressed, but then came in and was shocked when he was undressed with a towel covering up his buttocks. I don't, I don't understand that. I thought that was normal to get undressed for massage. That's why the masseuse left the room so he could get undressed. But that's pretty much where the explanation ends. Only a towel covering his buttocks. Plaintiff was extremely confused as normally you're supposed to be fully draped. Throughout the session, Watson refused to fully cover himself, even at plaintiff's request. He also made clear repeatedly that he was a professional football player who could help or hurt her career. That's a sign of a predator. I'll tell you right now, if somebody says, I'm really powerful, I can help or hurt your career, that's the sign you should probably leave if you're a massage therapist. During this session, Watson forcefully pulled her I, I just, to move her hand towards the pubic area. I heard about it because I was talking about it. He also it. instructed her to slide her door. hand across oh. his genitals. No. Asked her to touch Plaintiff his genitals. Shaking. Bad. And Watson knew she was afraid. She was intimidated and felt threatened by him. She was afraid of what someone like Watson could do. He kept coercing and intimidating her to the point where he coerced her to move her mouth towards her penis, forcing her to perform oral sex on him. Yeah, that's, there's no explanation for that. Plaintiff did not consent to any of this. No consent. explanation for that. Forcing her to give him oral sex. So the last one where he tried to kiss her, she said no, she cut it short and left. He didn't force her to do anything. Maybe he liked, I mean, I'm not saying he did or didn't. It doesn't sound like he forced her, helped pinned her down, made her kiss him, and then, you know, had his way with her. She said no and she left. You know, that's bad, but this is unexplainable. When you force somebody to give you oral sex, I mean, that is, this is bad. And that's where criminal charges could come in with conduct like this. You know, getting rejected by somebody trying to kiss them or trying to have them give you a massage or whatever, maybe no criminal conduct there, but forcing this is bad. I haven't heard any allegations like this until I heard that her read them from the complaint. She blacked out. With she fear. says she blacked out with fear. She was terrified. She felt helpless. She's getting emotional now, the attorney. After he was finished, he offered no apology. Plaintiff left, was shaking, violated, and ashamed. She was so, so shaken that she defecated on herself and ran to the bathroom to clean herself I mean, if up. she can prove that somehow, some way that she defecated she on herself after herself this happened, this that is damn What she could have done to prevent this conduct. Oof, that's, that's rough. That's terrible. I mean, that's, counseling. again, goes to damages, and she she's also sleep. having mental health counseling for the depression her and anxiety. With her fiancé has suffered. She suffered some depression. So you may have missed that because I was talking. So the, her relationship with her fiance has suffered. There are claims for that. Usually you have to be married for a loss of consortium claim, at least in Florida. So, but there could be additional claims for affecting personal relationships you have with other people. Those are additional claims and additional damages, which is why they mention them in the complaint. And you may miss it if you're not watching with a lawyer. And anxiety, she can't bring up his name without sobbing uncontrollably. She can't bring up his name without sobbing uncontrollably. Therefore, she needs this mental this health lawsuit? counsel as are the other women to prevent Watson from doing this type of conduct to another woman. And she wants to stop future conduct from Deshaun Watson. We've been very careful about um, the things that we've said are things that are filed in a public pleading. And that's what uh, Cornelia was reading from. These are very serious cases. And he reiterates, everything we said is public record. So we're not violating any attorney client privilege. We're not violating anything the bar says we can't say. We're just reading things that are from the complaint and that are absolutely public record, which is so important, which is why he mentions it multiple times. These are very serious cases that we've done a lot of due diligence on before we brought them. And so we will take a few questions. And now they're going to take a few questions. So that's basically the end of what they had prepared to say. So, I mean, I think they knocked it out of the park besides a few comments that were kind of sleazy. I mean, I think Busby and his colleagues knocked it out of the park with the purpose of this which is informing the public of things they didn't know before. Now, tons of the comments are still horrible, still just trashing him, trashing the victims, trashing the, his colleagues, trashing his family, which I don't know why people do. You can disagree, you can try to figure out what happens, but if it's not you, I have learned something. You don't know anybody. You don't know what anybody is capable of. You don't know if people are capable of lying and affecting somebody's life like this, or you don't know if somebody's um, capable of being a sexual predator and you never would have seen it on your own. So the point is not to judge whether someone's telling the truth or lying, it's just to understand that this is a fact-finding opportunity. There's going to be witness testimony, there's going to be evidence that come out. We're going to find out whether or not this is true. And if it goes to trial, a jury will decide who is telling the truth and who is lying. 
So this is something we're gonna follow along with, and this is in fact what I do, and sports are what I love to watch. So it's kind of a cool thing for us to collide and talk about, we're gonna keep doing it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like this type of content, like the video and subscribe. We'll be back in the future to talk more about Deshaun Watson and maybe some other cases that come out in the news.